Osprey Technology Acquisition Corp. SFTW SPAC is looking to merge with Black Sky. The ticker, if the, the deal successfully closes, will be BKSY stock. So currently, SFTW SPAC will be BKSY stock. Merger is expected to close later July 2021. Now, what is Black Sky? Sounds ominous. They're a pioneer in creating the real time Earth observation market. What's that mean? That means a constellation of satellites up in the sky that will be able to check in every few minutes and see what is going on. Now, Plus, this is a key aspect. So not only real-time observation, every few minutes checking in, they're expected to do it for a heck of a lot cheaper, about 90% cheaper than legacy satellites. So this is potentially a game changer. As, as folks know, with, let's say, se semiconductors, the lower, the more affordable they become, the more applications you could use. So now all of a sudden, this really cheap chip allows all these different functions. Um, so hey, if you're able to drop the price by 90%, what's the additional potential demand that you could have? And so that's that's really the multi-billion dollar question for them is who would want it? Now, obviously, you do have a lot of potential demand uh, from the traditional suspects, the, the usual suspects, if you will, the secret spy agencies around the world, but primarily US government at this point. Now, management is forecasting over 20x growth in the next five years, which is obviously among the best types of you know forecasts that I usually cover. Like, hey, you know, usually it's stretching if it's like, hey, five to ten x over the next few years. This is twenty x plus over the next five years, and they truthfully have some impressive investors joining that joining with them. I think the risk reward looks pretty interesting, but the company has yet to prove themselves in in terms of their commercial demand, really getting commercial demand that would prove that multi-billion dollar market potential. This video goes out to Unrivaled Investing Journey subscribers about that, a quick 10 second plug, if you will, where my name is Daniel, you're watching Unrivaled Investing. This is a no hype, mission focused channel, channel to try to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. If you enjoy learning about potential multi-baggers, types of companies that go up hundreds or thousands of percent, make sure you subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, I do appreciate that thumbs up. And if you wanna follow my personal journey as I'm trying to find these potential multi-baggers each month, calling out at least one potential multi-bagger, go to unrivaledinvesting.com, click on journey. So what's the deal? We got Osprey Technology, Acquisition Corp, SFTW SPAC, merging with Black, Sp Black Sky, expected to close July 2021. About 500 million in cash coming in, 300 million from the from the SPAC, another 200 million about from the private placement. Almost all of it's going to cash on the balance sheet to fund this business's growth. Hey, set launching satellites and building them costs a lot of money. You know, all this all this custom build and software and all that goes into it. A lot of money that it's going to cost, and we'll get into that in just a second. And then the rest just goes to cash on the balance sheet. Interesting, like, interestingly, you don't have any you know existing investors looking to cash out. This is purely hey, let's double down, invest more in the balance sheet. And you do have some existing investors like Peter Thiel's Mithril Capital actually investing in the pipe as well as as well as some interesting other pipe investors like Tiger Global. So what is Black Sky? We've sort of gone over the deal. They are a pioneer in real-time Earth observation. So think the ability, this is their sort of their mission, is the ability to monitor lo multiple locations on Earth every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, check in, see what, see what things are looking like, like having artificial intelligence be able to analyze the data, tell you what's going on, identify, put labels on things, tell you how fast things are moving, um, and in multiple different types of spectrums as well. So right now, you're looking at five commercial satellites in service, but they're expected to launch 11 in the next 12 months. 16, 16 satellites are currently in production. So here's what you see on their website where it's a key theme that, that they're articulating right now is why Black Sky, our customers rely on Black Sky because they need to be the first to know. And this gets to the real time monitoring aspect. Every 30 minutes, let's be able to check in, is that if you wanna be the first to know for some of this data, you're gonna to wanna to go to Black Sky because we're gonna have the satellites that are gonna be able to quickly quickly do this. Um, when you need to make rapid and informed strategic decisions, Black Sky makes it possible. Now, it's not just their own satellites as well. It's not just their own constellation. They're also gonna be, See, it's not just giving data, it's looking for solutions for the end customer, whether or not it's a super spy secret, you know, a government agency or a potential commercial user, but it's taking their constellation, partner up with other satellites, Internet of, Thing, Internet of Things, hyper-local platforms, and third-party sources, think social media, where maybe you layer on multiple different types of data to get a more informed picture of what what's actually going on. And so, 
you know, as, as we keep digging in, and here's a picture of one of the satellite images, their next gen satellite in 2023 will improve their imaging re resolution to 50 centimeters and short wave infrared capability. Now, the reason why this is super interesting is that that means this picture, you're able to, to, to track a port and you can see the boats and the boats are labeled and this is all done with AI and it's telling you how fast things are moving up. There's a car over here, it's moving that fast. You'll, but with 50 centimeter precision with the satellite, you'll be able to track individuals as well. Um, and keep in mind, this is just what they've told us. One, one could presume there's also a layer of secrecy and that there's even cooler stuff that's being built and developed for, you know, the, the top secret customers that they have. So, so what's the appeal of something like this? And obviously, like, look, I've alluded to it multiple times, you're going to have a lot of government business. Historically, was a supply constrained business. It's worth calling out, like historically, the government's like, just give us as much as we you can give us. So when they're saying supply constrained, being able to say, hey, we can give you data every 30 minutes, that's a big deal versus, hey, you're gonna have to wait every few hours and nope, we got a shot. Um, so that's that's an interesting perspective and you can see several of the major customers or potential customers, um, whether you know this is all like US Army, US Air Force, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, IARPA, Intelligent, Intelligence Advanced Research Projects. Um, so there's there's a lot of potential interest. They're saying these, these these customers have the contract value potential of six hundred million dollar plus. So that's that's the what I would say is the very sort of obvious angle for Black Sky. But there's a second aspect to it, which I I would argue is going to be a key driver for this story for this company longer term, which is understanding the commercial aspect of it. And they say, look, there's a lot of potential commercial applications, businesses that are looking to use it, you know, whether or not it's energy and utilities, insurance, mining, agriculture, environmental and engineering construction, where at the end of the day, it's about affordably checking in on certain sites every few, you know, every 30 minutes if you need, or every, you know, two to three times a day if you need to show you what things look like. Now for energy and utility companies, it might be like regulatory perspective, like, hey, making sure your plant's not blowing up or there's not an unexpected leak. For insurance perspective, it could be like, hey, let's, how do we actually check to make sure this house was damaged or that there was this car accident at this corner and that, that this, you know, this actually happened. You can actually, if you have near continuous monitoring every few minutes, you're gonna be able to cross check the data you're getting elsewhere, say, oh, actually this happened, we can see it. Um, so that's that's an interesting perspective for mining. See see what the you know if you have an outdoor mine, what the pit looks like. See see what the stockpiles look like. The land use, um, checking crops with agriculture. That seems a very obvious thing. And and each of these, I mean, look at each of these potential markets. You can't see me can't see what what energy is here because I'm covering it. But that's three billion. But each of these is multi billion dollars potential markets. So if you're able to to successfully land some of these, I would argue you're looking at you know, real upside over time, you know, really able to capture a lot of revenue potential. And what's interesting is management calls out two things. And this this sort of gets to the prior comment of, of being supply constrained in the you know, operating industry that's supply constrained is that they have take or pay contracts by and large. So the reason why that's music to my ears is that means regardless of what the end customer, let's say a, a big farmer, you know, has, you know, if they if they have a contract with Black Sky, regardless of the contract, they're still going to pay. It's take or pay. You're good. You, you, you've licensed and you have a subscription for this amount of time to use the satellite. You want X, X amount of data, X amount of info. You're going to pay for it um, whether or not you use it. And so take or pay contracts reflects this inherent sort of supply demand aspect where who has the leverage in the relationship? Oh, it's the supplier has the leverage in the relationship when it's take or pay, when you're saying something supply constrained. And it just strikes me as much bigger market potential than just than just, you know, the secret spy agencies of the world. This is this is a huge potential commercial development. And the reality is as you bring that cost structure lower, what additional functions will will there be? You know, what additional demand could there be that we don't even know about yet? Um, you know, they talk about infrastructure and tracking to make sure you know roads and bridges are I, look look well. And at the end of the day, if you're launching satellites that have 50 centimeter precision, then then you're pretty much getting there, where you're going to be able to say, oh, there's there's some cracks here that we know we didn't see. X number of months ago, and we're constantly recording this, so we we can have a track record to show how this has progressed over time. 
And, you know, look, this is a new era of satellite imagery. You can see the lowest cost imagery capture. That's that's a, an angle that they're saying. This is a low cost value proposition um, saying that for legacy satellite imagery, it costs 120000 This is for the monthly cost, so $120,000 per month for data imagery collection for a 12 kilometer uh, site. So $120,000 per month versus Black Sky that's going to be $12,000 per month. And they're saying, look, we're also going to be offering a 50 to $300,000 annual subscription for businesses and organizations. So this is this is moving beyond the tens of millions of dollars required for satellite imagery. This is moving into a new territory, new market of if you're a real established company, maybe heck, maybe you're a hedge fund, you know, that that's a, one of the major hedge funds and you want to see what parking lots look like for, you know, X number of lots you know every every week three hundred thousand dollars for a major hedge fund that's that's gonna be nothing for them and so i'm thinking there are gonna be actually a lot of potential commercial uses for this we just haven't quite seen it yet but at this price point absolutely you could you could generate a lot of demand especially if it's only going to cost about twelve thousand dollars a month um you know three hundred thousand dollars a year is, is sort of what they're saying um for an annual subscription, you know, from some somewhere between fifty and three hundred thousand dollars, based on the usage. And so, what happens with this lower price point? Well, you get lower satellite costs, lower data costs, higher utilization. This is the key point. So, you get more and more utilization, greater return on the assets because people are using it more, more spend, um, higher operating leverage. So, the key point is lower prices result in increased utilization. As you have more utilization, you're collecting more data. You're taking more and more images. You're building a database of what something looks like over time, every 30 minutes, over months. You're going to see how something looks. Oh, this is interesting. We're building this out. Um, and with more and more data, you're going to have the algorithms that are going to be able to make better conclusions. Oh, there was this bombing downtown and we can see, oh, we were taking pictures of this city in the months prior to it. And you know what? In the three days before we saw this, this is a complete hypothetical, but th that's that's why I'm I'm calling out is that you're with more and more data an algorithm from Black Sky is going to be able to come up with conclusions that others might not have. If you're just going to put a satellite in the sky and want to capture one area, that's not going to be enough. You're going to want to be the company that has the database, all this data of imagery that tracks things over time to tell you in real time how things are different than let's say they were three months ago. And there'll be a predictive element as well. Oh, that's interesting. We, you know, we saw this, this type of infrastructure damage, you know, before this bridge went out over here. Um, maybe it's applicable over here as well. And we can, you know, oh, this bridge went out. Let's check all the different bridges in this geography and see how, you know, if there's, if there's been any, you know, decay in them. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling, you know, I'm pulling random examples here, but there's going to be so many different angles that you can have like for example they call it routing predictions regarding um you know how much port congestion and efficiency there is like how fast boats are, are unloading or loading cargo so that strikes me as super interesting type of stuff like time series analysis weather analysis event detection hey something's unusual that's going on over here that we haven't noticed in the last few months or even the last year didn't happen the same way um so at the end of the day, what makes them special is there's like a couple of elements, uh, even a few elements that I haven't yet addressed. First is they custom build their own satellites. And then this is in partnership with a company called Thales Alina Space, which is a French company where they own 50% of a joint venture called Leo Stella. So they, they equally own a 50-50 uh, joint venture um, where they're custom building their own satellites. So that's step one. They're not just ordering a satellite from let's say a Lockheed Martin, they're building it themselves. Then next, they they, they, they're integrating their own complete software solution. It's a vertical ownership up and down from the hardware to the software to managing the data to layering on the machine learning artificial intelligence that results in the analysis that the end customers want. So this is this is a complete solution. This isn't an integrate, this isn't like a consultant that's taking multiple pieces and putting, slapping it together. This is, they're gonna own the whole thing and then deliver the solutions to the end customers and then you take it and then they say, hey, look, we're going to have a few dozen satellites, let's say within the next few years, but we can still leverage the data from other satellites, 
other platforms, internet of things, cameras on the ground, you know, social media, link that data up with what we're seeing and that could result in, in you know, really interesting insights for the customers, real-time insights for, for customers. And it's a database of events leads to better algorithm for predictions where you see, hey, we have the data over the last few years and we're able to tell what oh this is this is what happened before this bridge collapsed and we can see boop 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 over the last few months how it decayed and there it is or heck you you know you're in a city where there's a lot of um you know bumps in the road you know you can quickly spot that out versus people just having to complain you know there's there's all sorts of potential applications and at the end of the day taking a step back from from me pulling these these one-off applications it's really a bet on do you think the world is going to be constantly recorded in the future you know, do you think there will constantly be cameras in the sky effectively recording, you know, probably start off with the major cities first and it'll start off with, you know, major cities of interest around the world first and then it'll expand to more and more, you know, geographic, re you know, more and more rural regions. Um, but this strikes me as a very obvious trend longer term um, that the world will be recorded. It will be archived in terms of what, what it looked like and you'll be able to capture in very s small detail of where people were and what the world looked like. Um, you know, here's that, that car and here's that person um, over an archived basis, you know, over years. And it'll be all over the world, every major city. And so when you, if you think that's the direction the world's heading in, there's a good chance Black Sky is the bet to make on that because they look like they have the low-cost solution. Now, I, I think that this is... Uh, an obvious direction that at least I'm, I'm not saying it's necessarily I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying this is a good thing. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying like, yes, I love having spy in the sky. This is amazing. I can't wait to just wave and someone will recognize me whenever I look at the sky. No, that's that's not what I'm saying. I'm, what I am saying is like, yes, regardless of the moral implications, do you think governments around the world are going to want this? And do you think commercial applications around the world will will want this and the answer to both of those is like yeah and so if the technology is there and there's the demand it's going to happen whether or not you like being able to wave and you know someone's watching so i i think it's obvious that it's going to happen and black sky is potentially the bet that's going to make it happen or is going to be one of the key leaders that will make it happen so what's that mean for their financials so what are they projecting they're projecting this incredible growth now keep in mind they've already put up some some nice growth growing from 15 million in revenue to 22 million in revenue so around a little under 50 percent growth and they're expected to 22x over the next five years to 546 million in revenue by 2025. Now keep in mind, you know, so you do have some really noticeable revenue growth acceleration. We'll talk about that in a second. But look, this business is really unprofitable right now. Negative 4% gross margin. Now they did invest, they call out, look, we did invest a bit in the business this, this past year in 2020, going from 20% plus gross margin to negative four. They think longer term, look, you're gonna get close to 80% gross margins, which kind of makes sense to me. Like you're, you're going to have, you know, these satellites and it's just about utilization. Let's just make sure they're constantly snap, 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 snapping pictures all day long. And like once they're up up there, it totally makes sense that you're going to have super high margin on that. Um, the question is, what, how, how does that flow through into your operating margins? You know, they're saying longer term, you know, they, they could get to potentially uh, like 45% adjusted EBITDA margins. Now that that might be quite an adjustment because that um, you know adds back the depreciation and amortization. So then the question is like, well, how long do those satellites potentially last? Either way, you know, here's CapEx. CapEx is the amount of money or capital expenditures, the amount of money they're spending on the physical goods, which is the hardware. And you can see that's, you know, that's very sizable in the years ahead and resulting in a very large cash burn over the next few years. So, you know, I called out that they're going to have several hundred million dollars in cash on their balance sheet. But the reality is it's going to be they're going to need every cent of that. And there's still a good chance with burning, let's say, 300 million in cash over the next three years. They're going to, you know, there's a chance that they want to re-raise because re they're raising, you know, 450 on the on the balance sheet and they're going to be burning, let's say, 300 million. So good chance you have another capital raise in the future. So it's super unprofitable and will be for the next few years. You know, you're going to have to, you're, I, I would say, I would expect this stock to be very volatile even after the deal goes through, even if they're putting up great growth figures, like just on the margins, 
you know, look, as, as investors saw this past week with a lot of volatility with, with some of the high flying tech stocks, is that uh, when you have these these stories, these companies where you're, you're, you have to project several years out on their margins, is that this margin assumption can come under question. And the difference between, let's say, using a 45% margin and a 25% margin means, you know, and, and that can happen. That can happen, you know, put up a bad quarter where, where you're unprofitable. And in that case, then all of a sudden, you know, people say, hey, this should have a 50% haircut. And maybe you, maybe you don't get a contract in time or it's a little bit lumpy and your growth isn't what it, what's expected. So this is going to be a very volatile stock, I would expect, in the years ahead. Um, and uh, they've it's going to be years, years before you ha really have the proof that the profitability will be there. So that's, you know, this is going to require ultra long-term patient investors to, to sort of get you there. Um, and that's that's why you do have these sort of venture type investors like Peter Thiel, you know, involved in the name. Um, you know, you will have speculators say, hey, I think, you know, this can go up or down. But I, you know, just from a long term investment perspective, this is, this is, there's, for at least the next three years, it's going to be a little bit of a lonely road, <laughs> you know, looking at this level of cash burn. You know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to really believe in yourself and believe in the company, uh, you know, holding on to that. Um, you know, that said, you know, looking at that cash burn, you know, flip it to the cash, you know, the revenue that they're projecting. And the reality is, based on what management said, uh, their revenue projections for the next two years, which keep in mind, you know, reflect really fast acceleration growing from 50% growth to 109% growth to 150% growth over the next two years, you know, so going from 22 million to 114 million, so about 5x plus uh, in the next two years, they're saying, look, we've pretty much got that in the bag, which is, you know, look, how many companies can say, yeah, 5x in two years, um, and we're very certain about it. And they're saying, look, this is based on contract and follow on from 2020 to 21. You know, there's only 4 million in net new that's not based on co existing contracts or let's say follow on work. Um, and then going from 2021 to, to 2022, it's only 13 million. So in both cases, it's about 10% of the business that's net new contracts that they need to win. And that's out of a pipeline of $1.7 billion. So the only concern I have is when you when you have this contracted and, you know, follow on, it makes me wonder like, is follow on something that hasn't been structured yet? Like that's something that's going to be negotiated, in which case this four millions, like really, you know, that the, they can miss by a lot more than four million. Uh, so it's it's that sort of question, like is contract and follow on potentially a little squishy? Um, but based on this, from what management's saying is like, look, there's, it's really likely that you're going to come, you know, you're going to be close to a 5x uh, within the next two years, which is pretty interesting seeing that level of growth, um, especially relative to their very sizable pipeline of $1.7 billion of, of interest. Now, how do I think about it when it comes to valuation? So first of all, you got to take the shares outstanding. I take this from the presentation. I look at the footnotes. I see what the what the additional shares are based on the share price, the additional warrants. Take the, the current share price. That gets to around 1.9 or a little under $2 billion. So whatever you see in Yahoo Finance for SFTW, that's not accurate. You need to look at this right now. Um, you need to think about what's the actual share count pro forma for the deal going through. What's their revenue in 2019? What's their guided revenue? And then this high side is based on management's guidance. You know, we're in, by 2025, you're going to be at 515 in, in revenue. And that's that's largely what I'm penciling out here. You know, what they penciled out here of 546. So I'm, I'm saying the same thing in terms of over the next five years on the high side, 45% optimized margin. Um, and so you could see, you know, I'm doing a range from 90% growth to 109% growth. So this is this is in line with what management says. This is a little bit of a discount. Maybe maybe they don't get all that net new business that they expected. What's the margin profile longer term that that you're valuing this business on? And I'm, you know, I'm the management says 45% longer term. I put 35% because I say, hey, maybe you need to factor in the amortization of these satellites and that you're going to have to add new ones, you know, every few years. Um, and so then you could see what what the implied valuation is for this. Um, you could see it's easily over 100 times 
like a optimized earnings multiple. So very, very expensive, but it is a hyper fast growth company as well. Um, now I, the reason why, you know, as, as regular viewers know, the reason why I used an optimized margin figure is that way you can compare where you are today versus where you think they will be in the future. And your return as an investor is the delta between the revenue per share from today until that that endpoint five years from now is, is the example. So that's the reason why I use an optimized margin and think about what's the optimized margin. Let's assume it's let's let's assume you're valuing it on that same optimized margin based on what they achieve longer term as well as today. The delta is the revenue, and then you also think about what's what's that multiple that they'll be valued at. Let's say in five years from now, and so you know doing this and keep in mind this is a part of my value proposition to you, uh, my my unrivaled investing YouTube subscribers, where uh, you know you click on the description of this video and you can click file download. You can play around this, play around with this sheet yourself, so you can think about what assumptions you want to make in terms of the risk reward, and so. You know, I put a I put a wide range here from 15 to 35 times. Um, that might be low on on the low side. You know, too low for for a company. Now, if they're really executing, that's the question: is will they really be growing? Will they really be delivering this sort of hyper growth for years to come? That's that's the I'd argue multi billion dollar question. Um, if so, then great. Um, you know, if and if if so, then and it's closer to the 70, you know, or 86 percent growth, there's a good chance the multiple is going to be high, maybe even higher than what I'm penciling out here. But if the growth isn't there, I would expect a lower multiple or if, let's say there's this the, the, the margin profile. It's actually a lot more unprofitable than people expected um, or there's actually new potential competitors that are offering similar solutions. At this point, I'm not really seeing that. But that you know, I, I want to do a range of assumptions for how I think about these things. I mean, that's 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 I think the the realistic way to think about it. And I want to have a high and low when I'm thinking. I want a logical framework when I look at any investment. Of course, could could SFTW and the future you know black sky stock go way above or way lower than when I'm, when I'm sort of this hypothetical valuation? Of course it can. But I like having a logical framework for which I think about these things. Um, and so, you know, as, as I summarize and I stay, take a step to, to summarize Black Sky, it strikes me as a special company. You know, there's, a, and the reason why I say special is there's inherently not a lot of competition, you know, because you have this huge cash burn. So, like, not a lot of companies can be in a position just to be like, hey, let's just blow $300 million over the next three years. It's tough to do. It's tough to revolutionize an industry. It's contract driven business. And keep in mind, this is like U.S. Army, space the space force um you know in in contracts this is a multi-year you know soliciting process it's gonna take years to win this it's gonna be a lumpy business um there's and there's an uncertainty there's an inherently uh, inherent uncertainty over whether or not this sort of like hey all these multi-billion dollar commercial markets whether or not they'll actually be able to tap into it it's it's not just it's one thing to be able to say oh yes insurance companies two three billion dollar demand that's great, that, but that can also be pie in the sky if you don't have a sales force that's trained to educate the customers. And I think there's going to be a lot of customers that are going to need a lot of ex, you know, education in order to actually drive that commercial sales. So this could be a long sales cycle as well. Um, that said, you know, despite what I would say are these challenges, and keep in mind, these challenges are also what, what potentially make it a special company. It means it's going to be inherently less competition. They're disrupting the market. 90% cheaper, at least that's based on what they're saying, um, potentially a subscription model for commercial customers. Now, keep in mind, that's going to be down the road when it's like, hey, 50,000 to, 50, to 300,000. Right now, it's primarily government contractors, longer term commercial. Take or pay contracts does suggest that the supply demand leverage goes to the suppliers. In this case, the satellite providers or black sky, you know, the imagery providers, the data analysis, the analytics. Um, so I, I like knowing that this is supply constrained, take or pay contracts, low cost, you know, value proposition. Um, and it's a question also of what type of future do you think we're heading to? You know, if you think we're heading to a future of constant surveillance where the world is not only being constantly surveyed, but also being recorded, being archived. Oh, what did the city look like at this time? Where were you at this time, at this day? 
Um, you know, if you think we're heading to a world that looks like that, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm pro that, but if you think that that's the world we're heading to, there's a good chance that, you know, Black Sky or SFTW SPAC, um, might just be the way to play it. And you can see here's one of their sat one of their satellites being constructed. So, you know, I, I think this is an interesting setup. I do not have an exclusive follow-up for this video. That's a journey subscribers will find out if it becomes part of my portfolio when I have my full monthly update later this week. Uh, and that's that's just part of one aspect to going to unrivalinvesting.com, click on journey. So the first part is, you know, at the end of the day, I'm looking for potential multi-baggers. Each month looking, a, I aim to identify at least one potential multi-bagger. My, my most recent multi-bagger, you know, went up like 50% in like two weeks. And I was like, ah, oh my gosh, it's like, this is crazy, like crazy, crazy market right now. But, you know, at the end of the day, each month trying to identify at least one potential multi-bagger, looking for things that can go up you know, hundreds of percent or even thousands of percent over time, um, you know, where it's where I can be a long term investor based on the fundamentals. Now, of course, there's going to be volatility. But look, I'm looking for things that can be part of my journey over a long year period, multi year period. I also do have an educational series uh, that I call out. Um, so that way, you know, if, if this is going to be part of your journey as well, that you you can learn along the ride. And if you want to learn about, you know, let's say how to think about the stock market, or you want to learn what's going on in the stock market. I also have a stock market commentary that will also be part of Unrivaled Investing Journey. Um, also, as I already mentioned, my full personal portfolio, I do give updates when I'm buying and selling. And look, this, is, this isn't like high frequency trading or I'm like, I'm not trying to do swing trading or anything like that. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is this a multi-year journey, multi-decade journey, where I'm looking for things that I can sit and hold on to for long periods of time, um, you know, maybe buy a little bit or, you know, hold on to it, you know, buy a little each month, that sort of thing, um, types of things that can go up hundreds or thousands of percent. And if you're interested in, in seeing, let's say, all the posts I've already done, just to, you know, for example, you can click on the catalog of contents, which is in the description of this video, and that has everything I've posted. So you can just see everything there. Um, and at the end of the day, just finding one potential multi-bagger can change your life journey. So if you're interested in following my journey, as I'm looking for these potential multi-baggers every day, every month, Go to unrivalinvesting.com um, and click on journey because just finding one multi-bagger can change your life journey. Uh, so if you're interested, follow my journey at unrivalinvesting.com. And if this video on Black Sky has been helpful for you, please make a point of subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, I appreciate that thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.